This is the brand new iPad 10 in this beautiful blue color. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing a walkthrough of everything that I would typically do on an iPad and just demo it to you so you can get a better idea of whether or not this iPad is right for you. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing this whole like get up here is because it's Halloween today. So happy Halloween to anybody that's watching. I'm going as Lucas from Stranger Things. So shout out to anybody who watches that show. Anyway, so right in my hand here, I have the iPad 10. And on the right side here, I have the iPad Air 5 for just a little bit of comparison that will do throughout the video and I wanted to start off with the design the iPad 10 definitely feels nice to hold in the hand it's you know it feels great like it feels like any other iPad that you typically would get the corners feel nice and rounded it doesn't feel sh overly sharp and it overall like this is comfortable to hold in the hand this is a beautiful color like I think blue is hands down the best iPad color you can get maybe the pink one would be a close second but I really like this blue compared to the iPad Air you can't really tell on camera but the in person, this iPad 10 here is such a deeper blue, it makes the iPad Air blue not look as nice in my opinion. The big upgrade here from the older iPad 9 is that this is basically getting a big refresh, like the whole new design chassis here with the edge to edge corners with the perfectly rounded display. The home button is now gone now for anybody who had an older iPad. And you know, it's just modernized. Like the iPad 10 is essentially a modernized iPad 9 and design wise, it's great. You also are getting USB-C, no more lightning port. So that is awesome. Like I'm so happy to see Apple transition out of lightning. Something else that I noticed, which I'm not sure you can tell, but the iPad 10 is actually still thicker than the iPad Air. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can tell on camera or not, but another upgrade to the new iPad 10 is the display. It's gonna be a liquid retina display. It's not gonna be the traditional retina display that we saw on the iPad 9. So there's gonna be a lot better color reproduction on here. I, I think it looks great. Side by side to the iPad Air 5, it's honestly kind of hard to tell which one is which just by looking at them. The only difference is that with the iPad 10, if you really pay close attention, there is an air gap on the display. You might not be able to see it on camera, but the display isn't completely raised to the top. There's no anti-reflective coating as well, so there'll be a little bit more glare on it. In comparison to the iPad Air 5, it is a laminated display. So all that means is that the actual display, when you look straight onto it, it it's going to look like it's at the surface. Whereas on the iPad 10, the display almost looks like it's a little bit inside of the iPad because it actually is. There's a little tiny air gap, but I think for most people, like display wise, it's apples and oranges. The display is fine, like it's pretty good. Okay, now I wanna do a speaker test to see how the speakers fare with some music. Yeah, this is good. The big thing with the new iPad 10 is that we're getting stereo speakers, which I think is a big deal. In the iPad 9, there, it's not stereo, they're just f like bottom firing speakers. So it's really nice to see on here that we're getting like stereo audio to both ears. It makes such a difference when you're listening to music, watching videos. For fun, let's compare it to the iPad Air. I'm curious if the iPad Air sounds a little bit better or worse. I couldn't really hear a specific difference, but I think the iPad Air 5 sounded slightly better, but the iPad 10 sounds great. Okay, this is a webcam test on the new webcam put into the iPad 10. It is now actually center to the screen. So as look here, the webcam is now center. It's the first iPad to have a center webcam, which is awesome because on all other iPads, like the iPad Air, the webcam is actually at the top. So whenever you want to go into um, like a FaceTime call or something, the webcam's always gonna be off to the side and it, it, you're never really center when you're using your iPad and holding it horizontally like this. With the iPad 10, the webcam is in the center. So we are center to the, like, to the person that we're talking to. This looks great. I really like it, quality's good. Yeah, like literally no complaints. These new iPad 10s do come with Wi-Fi 6, so it's a bit of an upgrade over the last generation iPad, which only had Wi-Fi, I think, 5. The testing is good. I don't have any Wi-Fi 6 routers in my home right now. I still have Wi-Fi 5 routers. I still got 300 megabits per second and 144 upload, so this can pull like a serious amount of data pretty quickly. So another thing that I like to do is just test the browsing capabilities of an iPad, like just holding it and using Safari. Feels good in the hand in a vertical position and just like scrolling through, smooth, butter. You know, even with the A14 chip that's in here, it's a little bit of an older chip. 
uh, but still newer than the one in the iPad 9, but not as new as the one in the iPad Air 5, which has the M1, and the iPad Pros, which now have M2. I mean, it's not quite as snappy as an iPad Air, I will, I will say that much. You can feel the difference of M1 on an iPad by just like scrolling through, but A14 is still smooth. I think for anybody that just wants a pretty iPad that, that runs quickly, just going through the Apple website and just browsing the internet, this works great. Like there's like no lag, no delay at all with what I'm doing. If we even go to a heavier site like New York Times, lots of stuff on there. Look how quickly that loads. No issues at all. Like this is, this is great. And if I press into a web, a, like a, a lizard brains, yeah. I mean, it's asking me to pay, but um, yeah, web browsing is great. Typing experience, let's go ahead and test it out now. It always is kind of awkward to type like with one hand like that, but it, it does get the job done. One neat little trick you can do is if you hold down on the keyboard button here and then you go to floating, you can now type like on an iPhone with one finger. And if you find that more comfortable, that works too. And I mean, honestly, it, it kind of kind of does work a little bit better, I feel. Okay, so now let's test out the note-taking capabilities on the iPad. So this iPad 10, just like the iPad 9, can only use the Apple Pencil Gen 1, as well as the Logitech Crayon, which is actually the one that I am using. I actually really like it. Also, this isn't sponsored, by the way. Logitech isn't sponsoring this, but something else that I really like about this, like Apple Pencil alternative, is that number one, it's cheaper, but number two, it has like these rounded, kind of edged out corners. So when I roll the pencil, it's gonna eventually stop. Whereas on the original Apple Pencil Gen 1, it's like a perfectly smooth cylinder, so it's just gonna roll off the table. But with the crayon, works great, doesn't roll anywhere. And it just instantly starts working. There's no like pairing process required. You literally just turn on the crayon and then you just, oh, let me just turn it on. Got a little green light there. And then now I can just write and it just works. Works just like that. There is a slight, ever so slight delay like but it's as smooth as you'll get on any other tablet, if not the smoothest writing experience on a tablet out there. If you want the most precise tablet for note-taking, the iPad Pro is the one because it has a higher refresh rate screen. But I think for most people, students, moms, dads, chil like children, people that just aren't like super tech nerdy like me, or anybody else that you might know, this screen is perfect for note-taking. Like this works great. The app that I'm using is Notability. So you get different colors, you get an eraser, you can just erase things out. You can zoom in if you want to. And it's great, like the screen is good. There's lots of clarity. Babe. So you guys can be the judge for yourself. You're, you're seeing how it like responds to me writing with this pencil. I think it works pretty good. Like I have no complaints. This is definitely a good size canvas for taking notes in class or you know doodling wherever your heart's desire takes you. Also with the new iPad 10, there is going to be touch ID now on the on the power button. On the iPad 9, we had it on the home button again. There's no home button anymore on here, which I think is the right choice. I love the iPad 9. I think it's a really incredible value, but it looks old. So, I'm really happy that they upgraded it and you know, now we get touch ID. Works great, you just put your finger here and the screen unlocks really quickly. I'll demo that one more time. Finger there, unlocks just like that. Like there's literally no issues. Finger there, opens like that. And then also, if you want a little quick tip, set up multiple fingerprints. So when you're holding your iPad on, a, on like a sandwich or horizontal position, put your finger there, unlock just like that. And yeah, so Touch ID works great. I'm gonna lower the volume just a little bit here. But again, I will say the stereo speakers sound great already. Like it makes such a difference. That for me alone would be a reason not to buy the iPad 9 and just the fact that the speakers are better. It just makes the iPad 10 or the iPad in general a better media device, which is what a lot of people use iPads for. It's kind of hard to play while I'm recording because I want you guys to be able to see me play at the same time. My first blood, ice. Oh, what the heck? Never mind, now I got him. He has like a freaking thing on his head. Oh boy. Got him. Oh boy. Get away from me, get away from me. Get away from me, get away. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of impressed by the, the quality of the NBA games on iPad. They always look 
pretty good. Even though it's about Freddy. Tenobi. Back to Barnes. Freddy. Open three. Oh! Nice. Uh, love that. Come on, Freddy. Let's make a play. Oh. This Pascal. Oh. And one. Get into transition. Okay, I got a little bit too excited there, but the next thing that I want to take a look at is photo editing. That's something that I do a lot of on my iPad. I love to just import photos into Lightroom and then adjust the coloring here. Again, it's it's no different on these newer iPads. If I pull up any photo right now, this M2 MacBook Air, um, it loads the photo just fine, and I'm able to very easily take control of my photos and do whatever I want to them. Like, the, honestly, the experience is very similar to using an iPad Air 5. I actually don't own an iPad Pro. I've never felt compelled enough to buy one. So that should be telling to you by how good of an editing experience you can get on base iPads and iPad Airs. Even with this photo right here, you get all the options you need in Lightroom to adjust the photo to your liking. It's just a joy. I say this in all my iPad walkthroughs, it's just a joy to edit on it because you have your pencil in your hand, you feel like an artist as you're kind of weaving out the different um, sliders here. It's a, it's such a fun experience and I really encourage more people to try it. Like if you just take nice photos of your family on your iPhone, send it in there, drop it over to your iPad, edit it on there. It's, you feel like more in control over the final uh, look of the photo, at least from my experience. Overall, would I recommend that you buy the iPad 10? It really depends. If you're looking for the best deal from Apple on iPads, this one isn't it. I still think you should go out and buy an iPad 9 because although it doesn't look pretty and new like this one, you're still gonna get the same iPad experience. Like the OS is the exact same, all the apps are the exact same. You get the same compatibility with the Apple Pencils. Everything feels the same, it just doesn't look as pretty as this one. But if looks are important to you and design is important to you, and I think that is the case for a lot of you watching, you do get quite a bit of an upgrade over the iPad 9 and for your money. Like just the design alone, I think would, would sway me to buy this instead, but it really just comes down to what you value. Again, it's gonna be the exact same experience on both iPads. So you're really paying a premium for something that looks really pretty. So something to think about. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to click this video right here to check out my iPhone 14 Pro review. That is an awesome phone, really underrated I feel. Um, so check out that review, you guys will enjoy that video. Subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed as well. And I'll catch all of you guys in the next one. Peace.